Laser sights enhance and maintain your accuracy in a time of crisis, preventing tunnel vision and allowing quick target acquisition in awkward shooting positions. Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. The number one national voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. You've heard me talk about this um, it's a weird trend, I guess you'd call it. A financial institutions moving away from, I almost would want to say attacking gun stores, gun makers. It started way back with Operation Choke Point, which was a uh, Clinton, or actually an Obama administration uh, effort. And what they did was the government basically told financial institutions, look, gun companies are high risk. Gun stores are high risk. And they rank right in there with drug dealers and pornography. And, you know, and these were the regulators saying, you probably don't really want to be doing business with these guys. Because if you do, then it's going to cause our inspectors to come in and give a real hard look at your bank. And you may have a lot of explaining to do. So it would probably be better for you. If you didn't do business with anybody in the firearms industry, and so gun companies, accessory makers, gun stores were getting calls from their banks saying, hey, we're we're dropping you guys. And then the latest in all of that is the Intuit company, makers of uh, Quicken, QuickBooks, as well as TurboTax, notifying gun stores and gun accessory makers, we're not going to process your credit card uh, accounts Gunsight Academy out in Arizona had that happen with uh, the Quicken folks, Intuit folks, holding on to $150,000 of their money and returning it to the customers, even though they've already paid for their services, they've already paid for their product. So it is this ongoing kind of a quiet assault on the Second Amendment, because if you can't get financing, if you can't process credit cards, you can't be in the business. And if you're not in the business, people can't buy your product. And that is, in fact, de facto assault on the Second Amendment. But as we always say, out of chaos comes opportunity. And that's what our next guest is going to be talking about. Joshua Bryant is with Blue Dog. Hey, Joshua, thanks for being on Gun Talk. Tom, it's a pleasure. I appreciate having me on. And yeah, you definitely hit the nail on the head with Operation Choke Point. That's really where it all started. That's where it got started, and then that supposedly is gone, although I don't trust that. Uh, But you have these uh, financial institutions who now are taking it upon themselves to say, yeah, that makes sense. And also you have this virtue signaling thing going on of, oh, look at us. Aren't we special? We don't do business with those people in the gun business. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, it's it's, it's really a a direct – impact to the business of firearms when you cannot take a credit card or, or process a payment. It's not just about credit cards as well. It's just about simple banking. You know, even checking accounts got shut down right. during Operation Choke Point. Um, the new administration has since got rid of that um, you know, federal regulation, but that did obviously help us when we got into the, uh, the business of specifically helping firearms businesses out because there's a lot of people who looked the other way and didn't want it. And if they did want it, they would process it at high risk. And you know what high risk means? Typically, that means higher rates. And that's where okay, we've so been able to shine. Let, let, all right. Now, let me back up because uh, there were companies that said, okay, w- we know other people aren't going to process your credit card accounts mm-hmm. because your your gun companies, your gun sellers will do it, but we're going to rate you as high risk. And in the business, that means you're going to have to pay a higher rate for that. So your store is going to end up spending more money for credit card card processing. So that's kind of a, it's part of that stigma thing. So first of all, who's Blue Dog? Who are you guys? Blue Dog is a credit card processor. We process for many different types of businesses around the country. We just so happened uh, a few years back to start in this firearm space, not just for any given reason. We, We knew there was a need in the space. 
We looked further into our credit policies with our clearing banks. We found out they're extremely Second Amendment friendly. And uh, in a crowd that didn't have many options, we thought, hey, we can price it at a decent rate and give them a, a great opportunity to, uh, to sell their product at a competitive rate. And uh, not just helping them from a service aspect, but also from you know, the day-to-day ins and outs of their business. And that, that's really where Blue Dog shines, Tom. We are not just a credit card we, processor. We, uh, we understand the business of firearms. So if you need a relationship with a distributor, you come to me. If you need an FFL lawyer, you come to me. We have many different facets and tools that uh-huh. we can use to help our customers. You said something in all of that that was interesting because you said you check with the uh, the lenders or the banks. One of the things that Intuit mm-hmm. was saying is they were trying to lay it off on. They said, well, you know, our banks that we work with, uh, financial institutions, they're having a problem with that, and that's why that we are shutting you down, which didn't yeah. ring true, but uh, maybe yeah. I, I guess the question is, if somebody says, okay, I want to try Blue Dog, but, gee, I'm afraid that the banks you guys are dealing with are going to end up telling you you're going to have to shut down and you're not going to be able to deal with gun companies. <laughs> yeah, we have more than triple checked. And, and, and a lot of these people that are shutting down firearms companies have these kind of terms in their conditions, in their terms and conditions, stating that if you sold mm-hmm. X product, you would be liable for this to happen. And to give you an idea, Square and PayPal, those of the world, have it in their terms and conditions, you are not allowed to sell this product. If you do, you are at risk of being shut down. And I'll I'll give you a heads up. A lot of people do that, especially Square going to, like, firearm shows, right? You want to swipe a card mobily. They actually can hold your money for six months legally, six months, Tom, because you were in in, in, um, noncompliance with their terms and conditions. So, okay, again, so, that's so another area we that's not going to happen with Blue Dog. Let me ask you, Absolutely is there not. a possibility? Because, you know, you got a lot of people who are dealing at, uh, at gun shows, uh, mm-hmm. gun stores who go there, and they are using mm-hmm. something like a square type of device the, so they can scan cards. Do you have something like mm-hmm. that? Very, very similar. Yeah, it's called our Blue Dog Fetch, a little play on words. Um, similar to Square, it takes the chip cards a lot of people are using now. It even takes the fancy Apple Pay that people sometimes use on their cell phones and even their watches mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's actually a show special for any of your listeners this week who happen to want to do business with us. We get a complimentary swiper. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm looking. Um, your your Blue Dog, that's Y-O-U-R, yourbluedog.com. Does that get you there? Yeah, the best place actually is for our firearms customers, firearms.yourbluedog.com. Um, it kind of ah. gives you an in-depth look at, why we specialize in the business, all of our different relationships, like I mentioned earlier, for instance, distributors like RSR Group and Davidson's and some of our bigger named customers. And, and again, all the different things that we can help the business with, not just for processing credit cards. And I, the th- point I would probably want to make also is if you are a gun store, you don't want to wait until you have the problem of your credit card processor yeah. saying, okay, it doesn't work anymore, and you're just going, now what do we do? You want to get ahead of this thing, don't you? Yeah, I mean, just I, I don't like to use scare tactics, but always you want to be aware and careful when you're when you're taking credit cards because of the environment that's going on currently um, with the business of credit card processing and banking. Um, just take a look at it. If you're not quite, quite sure, you can always call our office and ask. Uh, but also Google. So, you know, Google is a a great tool. You can check it out and see if the company mm-hmm. you're using now is in fact two way friendly. I got a question for you. You've been processing uh, financial transactions for folks in the Second Amendment space for a while. What has been your experience? You know, I'm thinking specifically of the idea that, well, gee, this is high risk, which to me would mean there's a higher risk of default or not paying or something like that. You seen anything like that? It's it's strictly politics driven. I mean, the, the sale of a firearm, Tom, and today in America, it's so stringent and it has more more um, due diligence on the sale than any product you can buy anywhere, right? Driver's license, background checks, signatures, you know, the plethora of things that we're required to do to buy a firearm. So mm-hmm. they just don't understand the business. It really comes down to they don't get that you can't buy a gun in the mail and ship it to your front door. And that's, you know, so to speak, <laughs> <laughs> right? There is a well, uh, the, reason, the reason I'm laughing is because <laughs> I'm thinking, well, everybody knows that you can't do that. But to your point, I guess surprised. not. I guess yeah, yeah. Oh, you'd be surprised. Yeah. There's processors who process for face-to-face transactions that they think a transaction over the phone or online is more risky, so they don't do those. Or even a manufacturer mm. is more risky, or a suppressor company 
is more risky. They just don't get it. They, they really just don't understand the business of firearms, that there are processes wow. in place, <laughs> and that's really it. Yeah, exactly. All right. So it's firearms.yourbluedog.com? You got it. All right, good. Well, look, I wish you tons of luck, and I'm glad that we have an option uh, in our Second Amendment space for companies because, you know, you, you have to have financing. You have to be able to process. That's the lifeblood of the business. Absolutely. Yeah, we're here to help, and uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Joshua. Take care. Yeah, that's, that's good news. That's a pretty cool deal. If you're a gun store, something to look at. Anyway, it's a possibility. All right, now we are open line. Talk about the guns that you want, the guns that you have gotten rid of. Oh, have you ever gotten rid of a gun and later on thought, that was the dumbest thing I ever did? Well, I'd like to know what gun that was. Tell me about the gun that got away. 866-TALK-GUN. When the U.S. military's elite units and law enforcement agencies across the globe demanded innovation and reliability, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. When world champion professional shooters demanded precision accuracy, they didn't settle. They chose Sig Sauer. So it's no surprise more and more civilian gun owners are refusing to settle for anything less. They're choosing Sig Sauer firearms, ammunition, electro optics, suppressors, air guns, and training. Sig Sauer. Never settle. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten free at the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's USSportsman.org. Now at LibertySafe.com, you can buy a Liberty Safe at a great price and receive 12 months interest free payments with zero down and 0% APR, with some safes as low as $20 a month on approved credit. Peace of mind, lifetime warranty, and in home delivery service. Go to LibertySafe.com now for 12 months interest-free payments with zero down and 0% APR. LibertySafe.com. back with you. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. I'm Tom Gresham. We're open lines. If there's a gun you want to talk about, if you're thinking about concealed carry, if you're trying to figure out how to carry, where to carry, should you carry? The answer is, yeah, not everybody should. It's not right for everybody. And we can talk about that. And people are sometimes surprised when I say, you know, if, if you tell me your circumstances and tell me, you know, a little bit about yourself, Every once in a while, I'll say, you know, you're probably right. That may not be a good choice for you. It's not for everybody. It's a serious matter, and you have to approach it in a serious way. But there's there's study necessary, okay? I am looking at an article here on Fox News website, and I'm chuckling because when you hang around this stuff long enough, it goes around and around, and you see the same thing come back. Just one day before President Trump is set to announce his pick to replace retiring Supreme Court Associate Justice Anthony Kennedy in a primetime address from the White House, a top Democratic senator suggested that stopping the nominee is more important 
than the upcoming midterm elections. Senator Dick Durbin, Democrat from Illinois, acknowledged that so-called red state Democrats may be tempted to vote for Trump's selection out of political necessity, but urged his colleagues Sunday to consider more than their political careers. Quote, Beyond the procedure, beyond the gamesmanship, it's a life and death important decision to be made by this court on so many issues. Here's what is making me smile about that. Dick Durbin is saying, all right, this is important. And it's, you have to consider more than your career. You as a senator may lose your seat, but it'll be worth it to us. It'll be worth it to the party leaders. It won't be worth it to you because you won't be a senator anymore. The most exclusive club in America. Hmm. I am reminded of 1994 when Bill Clinton was able to pass the Clinton gun ban. The famous so-called assault weapons ban. The Clinton crime bill. And in the State of the Union address after the 1994 debacle, the devastation on the Democratic Party when they lost so many seats in the 94 election, 95 State of the Union address, President Clinton looks out there and says, well, there are a lot of seats have changed here. It was due to your vote for gun control, but it was a principled vote. And a lot of the folks who are not here lost their seats because they voted for gun control. But it was a good thing to do, basically paraphrasing, basically that. Dick Durbin's saying the same thing now. At the time, you could almost see the members of Congress looking back and forth at each other and saying, What? He just said it was a good thing that they lost their seats? Of course, you know, for Clinton, he's going, I don't care. It's another Democrat. They replaced one with another. Who cares? And we got the vote we wanted. To the individuals, they lost their seats because the public, that would be you and me, looked at it and said, are you out of your freaking mind? You voted for a stupid so-called assault weapons ban that won't do anything. It won't reduce crime. It's impossible to do that. And, oh, yeah, by the way, the FBI says that more people are killed with fists and feet than they are with these rifles. What are you doing? So the public said, you voted for it? Good. Go home. You're stupid. Go home. And we sent them home. So Dick Durbin is warning a repeat of that. Now, it's one thing for the president, for Bill Clinton, after the fact, on the State of the Union, to come back and say that and say, okay, you guys did great. You know, a lot of you lost your seats, but we got the bill that I wanted. Well, it's all already after the fact. But for Dick Durbin to say, here's the deal, guys. We need you to fall on your swords. We need you to give up your coveted Senate seat for the sake of this Supreme Court nominee. And you know what those senators are probably going to say? Are you out of your freaking mind? No, I'm not going to give up my Senate seat for this. Trump's going to give his Supreme Court nominee either this one or the next one or something, and I'm not going to lose my seat over it. You're crazy. No, I'm not going to do it. Well, we'll find out, but we'll see how that all works out. Let's see. Um, Will is in Spokane, Washington, on line three. Hey, Will, how you doing? Well, Tom, I wish I was doing better, um, but the signatures for Initiative 1639 were submitted to our Secretary of State on Friday, despite the irregularities in the um, in the um, uh, initiative, and uh, but. At ten dollars a signature, uh, they got their signatures, and it's moving ahead. And we're looking at a big fight in Washington on this 1639. Will restrict all semi-automatic rifles to 
only those that are 21 or over, along with some other egregious aspects of the initiative. And I wanted right. to I'm sure. I'm uh, sure you, 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 hey, Bill, I will, you probably know that the Second Amendment Foundation tried to stop it, and now they're going to make another attempt at it because the people who were distributing, and they were all paid signature gatherers, uh, the print was so small on the petition uh, that the people couldn't read it. They would just sign it. They, and they would tell the people, look, I know you can't read this, but just go online and see what it says. And so there is still a chance to get this uh, initiative thrown out. Don't know if it's going to work. I mean, it is Washington State. But there's a chance that the Second Amendment Foundation could still get this thing thrown out. But you make a point when you say the $10 per signature, that's what they were paying to get these signatures. They would pay the people who get signatures $10 per to get these things. Uh, here's my problem, Will, and you know the drill. You have several billionaires, with a B, billionaires, who are throwing big dollars behind it. And I will tell you, it is almost, not entirely, but almost impossible to fight against that because they can buy up every minute of advertising space to convince the public to vote for something and convince them that it's something that it absolutely is not because people are not going to read it. This is a multi-page initiative. What do you think? Well, Tom, I, I totally agree with you. I really want to thank you for being so up on on the initiative. You're right on top of it. Uh, I think that we've got to uh, band together as uh, gun owners, um, as those that are concerned, and get ready to really stop this initiative if it does make it onto the ballot. This is a time that we have cannot be complacent in Washington State. And uh, this well, denies this denies the 99.9% um, of young people to be able to purchase a, yeah. uh, a rifle. Exactly. Hey, Will, i got to jump in. We're just about out of time, but I do want to make this point. This is not a Washington State deal. This is one of those where we say, okay, we're all in this together. We're going to go with the... Uh, the UN idea, if one of us is attacked, all of us are attacked. This is where we all need to come together. If this thing makes it on to the ballot, we're all going to have to get involved, whether it's showing up or donating or doing whatever it takes. We've got to stop it there before it gets to where you go. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. All right, I need a little help here. I'm trying to sort out in my mind. Um, it's one of those first world problems. You know, I love the 10 millimeter cartridge. I think it's great. Unfortunately, it's often underloaded. Uh, you don't get full power out of them. But, you know, you can poke around and find good ammo for it. Originally, of course, chambered in the Bren 10 semi-auto. Been in, chambered in a lot of semi-autos. There's more interest in it now than I've ever seen before. Springfield Armory has, has it. Uh, Ruger has it in, in 1911s. Uh, other companies have it. And now also we're seeing it in revolvers. So you've got uh, Smith & Wesson and Ruger has it in 10 millimeter revolvers, as do others. So, if you're going to be in an area, and, and the 10, you, you could say it might be more than you need. Of course, that's always tricky. Is it more than you need for self-defense against two-legged predators? But against four-legged predators, more is good, more is better. Whether they be uh, bears, wolves, lions, whatever. So the question I'm throwing out to you, in that situation, think of it as a bear gun. Semi-auto or revolver? Simple as that. Semi-auto or revolver in a 10 millimeter for a bear gun? I'm trying to sort that out. I have kind of, I lean both ways. Just I can talk myself into either one. I'm just trying to get some other opinions there. 866-TALK-GUN is the number. Or just dial us at Tom Talk Gun. Let's see. Blue's on line two. Out of Huntsville, Alabama, got some custom feedback for me here. Hey, Blue. 
Yes, sir. I have a question about the C C Z Scorpion EV03 S1 9 millimeter. I've I've been mm-hmm. wanting one. I haven't really seen one at the range. I was just wondering if if you've had the opportunity at one of the shot shows to look at it, shoot it, and could give me an opinion on it. Is it a good purchase? And I know it comes in two versions. You can get it with a suppressor or without a suppressor. And if you get it with the suppressor, do you have to go through the eight eight month stamp to get the whole sure. weapon? Of course. Anything that has a suppressor, whether it's integral, built in, or it's attached, it is a suppressor. And you got to pay the two hundred dollar tax. You got to apply. You got to wait, you know, eight to twelve months, whatever it is. So that's the deal. Anything, any kind of suppressor, that's a given. So there's no getting around okay. that. So what about the quality? Uh, now, let me ask you, are, are we t- we're talking about this, uh, the EVO, it's kind of a quasi, they call it a pistol, but it looks like a little bit of carbine, something like that. Are we talking about the same thing here? It's a carbine, but it has a folding stock. Okay. Question for you. What is the purpose? What are you going to be doing with it? Just, you know, planking, playing at the range with it. I mean, yeah, I absolutely go for it. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I have suppressors, and I know Silence Co. It says it has a Silence Co. muzzle brake, and but it probably wouldn't be the one that I would need for my Silence Co. suppressor. So okay. I was going to put my thirty thirty caliber suppressor on it. Thirty caliber suppressor on a nine millimeter. That's what I was going to attempt. Well, you know that the nine millimeter cartridge is 0.355 diameter, so it's larger than a 30 cal. If it's uh, well, if you're using which 30 cal suppressor are we talk about, what's it made for? Is it's it made for like a 308? Yeah, it's made it's for a 30 shaker. caliber, what? Yes, a shaker, shaker 762. Okay, uh, 762. You're going to need to check on that. I'm pretty sure you cannot, you can't shoot nine millimeter through that. I mean, okay. it, what, what the bullet's bigger than the hole? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. So also see, have a 45. See, have a 45. Now you're talking. You, you you can absolutely shoot a nine and a 45. Uh, right. And a lot and of people do that. They'll get a 45 suppressor and they'll shoot their nines and 45s in it. It'll be slightly less efficient, you know, one or two decibels uh, louder, but, you know, not a big deal. But, yeah, def- you. definitely do not try to shoot your nine through a 30 cal suppressor, okay? okay I'll, I'll double check that. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm not sure about the one you have, but if it is a 7.62, then that is a basically a 308 diameter hole in there or slightly larger and yeah as jim says you can shoot a nine millimeter in there once and then bad things are going to happen so you don't want to be doing that as far as the scorpion looks like fun i've never shot one uh i mean i could i could see how it's a fun deal Uh, i'm not sure where the true utility comes from if you say i want it as a self-defense gun or home defense gun i guess it could be um I, I at that point I tend to want to say I, I want more goose, but who knows? I mean, that's why they make so many different guns. I mean, I like the um, what was it, the Ruger PC nine, the little takedown nine carbine that they have, and that's just cool. And that's really kind of similar to what we're looking at here. It's all fun. It's all just going out to the range and shooting and having a bunch of fun. So I would say if you here's the thing. You've asked the question, so you obviously are interested in it. I would say go for it. Uh, you're going to like it because if you already are interested in it, you probably want it. You just want me to say, yes, do it. So here you go. Yes, do it. There you go. 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back. Founded with the singular purpose of building fine sporting firearms, Kimber creates a handgun for every person and a rifle for every adventure. While embracing modern manufacturing techniques, every Kimber depends on practiced hands for assembly, fit, and finish. There's no compromise in features, materials, or performance. Synonymous with quality, precision, and excellence, and made in America. Kimber is what all guns should be. Visit KimberAmerica.com. That's KimberAmerica.com. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like. 
what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. back with you asking the question revolver versus auto self-defense against well bears going into bear country where's bear country well it's a lot more than it used to be uh man we had we got bears in louisiana we got we got bears in a lot of part of the country now uh you walk out there all of a sudden whoop, there it is uh semi-auto or revolver and i know some will say well you know the uh, revolver is more reliable is it really Interesting question. Is a revolver more reliable? Well, one thing you do get with a revolver, I will say this. You get instant second strike capability, which would be if you pull the trigger and it goes click, if it's double action revolver, assuming, you pull the trigger again and you have rotated a fresh round underneath the hammer and it probably will go bang. With a semi-auto, you have to do a tap rack to throw a new round you know, underneath the hammer. I don't know. Just it's one of those thought processes we go through, these puzzles that we make ourselves go through. Semi auto versus revolver for bear protection. What's your opinion? Eight six six talk gun. Ryan's on one out of talent, Oregon. He's looking for an opinion. What you asking here, Ryan? Hey, Tom, longtime listener. I wanted to tell you about the ballot initiative that we're putting forth in Jackson County, Oregon, to combat a lot of the gun confiscation, no detachable magazine, no magazines over 10 rounds in our county, mm-hmm. and find out if you have your ear to the ground on other ways that citizens can get out there and do something. We have two booths set up, one in Medford and one in Central Point, Oregon, and we are three-quarters of the, or two-thirds of the ways to getting it on the ballot to offer no local support in resources, manpower, or otherwise to enforce gun laws that come out of Portland, which is a very liberal area in our state. Mm-hmm. Well, that's been done. Uh, some some counties in Illinois have done a similar thing. My question for you is this: um, Do you have the support of local law enforcement? First? Yes. The okay. existing that's sheriff big. and the only other sheriff's candidate, and all three county commissioners. Perfect. Okay, that that's a gold mine right there. I mean, you already figured that one out, so that's huge. Uh, then, having said that. Uh, how does it stand up in terms of state law versus county law? Is the state going to come down and try to crush the county on it? Well, our thoughts are that it buys a lot of time and a lot, a lot of legal dispute before that could happen, especially if local law, law enforcement won't support it. Even our state police down here and our, our boys in the National Guard are our guys, and they're just not interested in, in these gun bans passing. Well, I think it's a cool idea. I am all for it. I think you ought to do it, and I think you ought to. We got to get that to spread across the country. It's more of the blue-red spread, the divide, and you know, Oregon is very much like a number of other states. You know, look at Washington State, where you got Seattle driving it, and if you live, you know, out in Spokane, you got a whole different state you live in. And in Oregon, if you're in Bend, 
you know, or in Medford, you're in a different place than if you live in Portland, you know, Denver versus the rest of the state. But it goes on and on. So, I mean, our problem is, and you're addressing it, our problem is if the population base is enough in the big cities, they can drive this kind of stuff. And we got to find ways to fight it. And I think this is as good as any right now. I think it drives uh, drives it home if they were to pass something to you know get it up to a Supreme Court level and find out that it's unconstitutional based on that one amendment that's very short and very clear that we all love. Well, we hope so. Look, I wish you luck with it. Keep me posted on how it goes, Ryan. Thank you very much. Let's stay in Medford, Oregon, talk to Ken on line three. Hey, Ken, what are you looking at here? Well, I talked to you about a month ago or so about a, getting a holster for my HK VP9, and I mm-hmm. was looking for a leather holster. I'm, I'm more into leather than I am the plastic and molded. And I found okay. a several different manufacturers that make leather holsters that are a retention style molded for the particular gun. But after mm-hmm. doing some research, uh, and actually my daughter pointing out one yesterday, that when you put the gun into the holster, if you have a loaded chamber, that the holster itself, because of the retention and molding, will fire the gun. And I'm oh, wondering that's just a, that, that, that's a that's a feature. That way, it scares away the bad guys. Which when, when you put the gun in your holster, and it goes off. Yeah, but I don't want a big hole in my backside. <laughs> <laughs> You'll pass on that one, huh? <laughs> yeah, I just wondering, if, you know, because I'm I'm a big fan of leather holsters. I've been, you know, cowboy action shooting and. And every holster mm-hmm. I've ever bought has either you've been leather or or handmade. Um, is this well, something that's okay, common? Here, if you're here's the thing. In training? You, you, okay. A holster should never fire the gun by putting the gun in the holster uh, as far as a piece of the holster actually touching the trigger. That's a horrible design if that happens. I'm not really familiar with that happening. But, you know, uh, if you – you don't have to have a retention screw to have good retention in a leather holster. Let's start with that, okay? Okay. Uh, and I'm thinking of, I mean, there are a few brand names that come to mind. Galco, of course. Uh, Milt Sparks Holsters, uh, which is a little outfit, but really well-known and uh, been around a long time in uh, Boise, Idaho. Um, let's see, Lobo Gun Leathers, uh, Gunworks, that's a real good, they make really good holsters. You don't have to have a retention screw if the gun is, or rather the holster is made correctly. I think they call it boning and leather work. Uh, you're going to spend money, and you know the drill if you've been around. You're going to spend good money on a good leather holster. It's going to cost more than a, a plastic Kydex holster. Uh, but yeah. for a lot of us, well, as I speak to you at this moment, okay, I am wearing a leather holster. Okay. Okay. Uh, like and you know, it, and yes, it costs more than a hundred dollars, and there right. it is. Uh, and I'm okay I with that. I made holsters for my revolvers that uh, were up in the uh, four hundred plus each. Okay, I, I would say um, if you have any concerns have about a retaining <laughs> screw, or, you know, if you have any concerns with that, keep looking, find another manufacturer. Okay, now you were mentioning a small company in Idaho, Sparks Holsters. Uh, Milt, M-I-L-T, Milt Sparks Holsters. And there's okay. another outfit that I've done some work with, uh, Lobo. Just look up Lobo Gun Leather or Gun or Gunworks, uh, Leatherworks, L-O-B-O. Uh, but there I are a number of small outfits that make uh, really good leather holsters. And they almost have to be small because there just aren't that many people who are interested in leather these days. Everybody wants Kydex, you know, because, hey, look, they're inexpensive and they work and they're indestructible. And they don't absorb sweat. And there's a, there are a lot of good reasons to go with Kydex. And I wear them all the time. But I do like a good leather holster, especially when I have a revolver in it, which happens to be the case at times. <laughs> 866 Talk Gun gets you in here. Uh, bear protection, revolver versus semi-auto. you have any thoughts on that? And what about caliber? If you had your choice, what caliber would you have in your bear protection handgun? Just call me, Tom Talk Gun.
Mother versus Kydex in holsters. Boy, that'll start a fight almost anywhere. Except that you now you just get dismissed. If you like leather, you're like, yeah, you're just one of the little guys. You like leather forever. Yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, probably so. Yeah, I am. And I do. So there it is. Uh, Paul's on line two out of Palmer, Alaska. Got a thought about bear protection. Hey, Paul, what's your take? Hey, Tom, how you doing? I know you're short on time, so I'll give my little spiel real quick and get off if that's sure. okay with you. you uh, 55 years old, 55 years old, 36 years hunting in Alaska. I've had to put down three brown bears charging us in hunting camp all three times with a Ooh. Ruger Super Blackhawk 44 mag 320 grain bullet. I had a guy, we had a guy mauled to death about four miles from my house two weeks ago. He was hiking in the woods without anything. I think any gun is better than nothing. But I've also been at the range and watched a 10 millimeter Glock blow up in a guy's hand because he put buffalo board through it. So, in my opinion, ah. I'm just a big old dumb Norwegian and I'm not going to change. I'm going to stick with my Super Blackhawk 320 grain hard cast <laughs> mini format. So tell me what ammo you're shooting. I mean, the 320 grain hard cast, are you loading them yourself or are you using buffalo board? Uh, uh, yeah, I hand load them. There's a guy up here named Ace Doobie. He makes them. They're very, they're pretty. They're they're hard cast lead. They got a little bit of tin in them. You can't scratch them with your fingernail. I've shot them through a six inch tree into a bale of newspapers, pulled them out, and reloaded them. What barrel length uh, Super Blackhawk you carry? Seven and a half inch. I can sit at a bench on a sandbag and hit a twelve inch pipe blade at hundred yards. So for me. It's about shot placement. It's not about the biggest boom. I know we've got younger guys around us up here that have the 500 and the, you know, whatever the other the big one is. And, yeah, and I like the 454 Kasula because you can shoot 45 Long Colt, but Ruger doesn't right. make it in the Super Black Hawk. So I almost got so, a 475 Lion Ball about 25 years ago. I talked to old man Lion Ball in Missouri, but I never did because yeah. of the money. But. Are, are you using a, a chest carry holster? Yes, sir, we are. My wife and I, she's right-handed, I'm left-handed. We both use a Kydex leather chest holder that kind of wears like a shoulder harness but sits on your chest cross drum. Right, right. Pretty slick. Yeah, I used to, when I was in Alaska, I always carried a 6-inch, six uh, 629, uh, 44 Smith & Wesson and uh, had a shoulder holster for that, which I used at the time. Now I'd probably go with a chest rig, something like that. But, yeah, I'm actually kind of considering the, the 10, millimeter, 10 millimeter is attractive, but the truth of it is it's really hard to beat a 44 Magnum with hard cast lead bullets. So, uh, Paul, at some point, I need you to call back so we can talk about uh, charging brown bears and you stopping them because that's fascinating. But, yeah, I appreciate the call, sir. You, you take care. Continue to take care. Well done. I, I'm reminded when it talks about somebody who got mauled to death by a brown bear, uh, or a grizzly. When I first got to Alaska, living there, I asked a friend of mine who'd been there for a long time. I said, I said well, "What's the deal with about bears?" He said, "Well, it's simple. He says, I don't go anywhere in bear country without a gun." I said, "Okay, well, what's bear country?" He said, "Anything that's not paved." But oh, okay, I get it. In other words, have a gun with you all the time. Yeah, that makes sense because they will pop up where you least expect them. If you expected them, you probably wouldn't be there. So there you go. Um, the other thing, of course, is as he says, you got to learn to shoot it. And yeah, a guy that knows what he's doing, hundred yards with that revolver, shouldn't be a problem at all. I was hanging steel at sixty-five, seventy yards with that uh, new Ruger ten millimeter revolver not too long ago. Re- offhand, really wasn't that difficult uh, if you know how to shoot revolvers. If you got something with a good trigger, hey, I tell you what, here's what I'm going to do. If you want to be a part of the after show, call me right now at 866-TALK-GUN. Love to have you there. Uh, if you can join us, wonderful. If you haven't heard the after show, check it out. You can listen to it on your Gun Dio app on your smartphone. Be sure to grab that. In the meantime, go out and do a little bit of shooting this week. Take a friend. Take a family member with you. Don't go alone because we have to share this. That's what it's all about. Be careful. Check your six and always carry. 